This video was sponsored by Good Shop. Hey, remember this? Yeah, it's been a while. Cause you know, winter, bad weather, that sort of thing. We didn't want to get all wet and icky, but we're back at it. Finishing the outside. Motorcycle. All right, let's do this. So here's what we have in store. I'm thinking swing set going this way and that way. Tire swing right here so, you know, you can swing. And then over here, just regular swings so you can, well, also swing. Then over here, zip line coming off of this tower here and going Like that yeah yeah then of course we're gonna add some other little accoutrement to the treehouse some ropes and hanging thingamawatsits then up here off the top balcony I really thought we needed another way to get down I mean you can come up the stairs you can go down the ladder but what we really need is a slide but now that I think about it I'll just say we need a slide I'm not gonna act that one out because I do need to build all this stuff. So without any further delay, let's get started. The first thing I wanted to do was start on the swing set. So I checked to just make sure that our structures were plumb and the first one was dead nuts. The second one also perfect. So that's good because we know building off of them will be much easier. Now I already poured a concrete footing for this swing set because I had it in mind from the very beginning and I want it to perfectly come off of our little tower and the treehouse and meet at a 90 degree angle and then we can build swings off of that. So I pulled a string perfectly in line with our tower, set it over my concrete footing and I used this ancient rusty square to draw a straight line. Because even though it's ancient and rusty, it's still square. Then I did the exact same thing off of the actual treehouse, or treeless treehouse, as we like to call it, and I drew another line. Now we have an angle, a point, a cross section, a corner, whatever you want to call it, to position this. Now these are steel brackets that are made for an outside pergola. They're not technically made for swing sets, but they're solid steel, and I think if we retrofit them with a few bolts, we can make them work. So after using my base bracket to mark out where I needed to drill my holes, well, you can probably guess what I did next. I grabbed a hammer drill and I drilled some holes for our wedge anchors. Just like that. So far, so good. Now on top of this post, there's gonna be this other bracket. This is a little three-way bracket. So we have the post going up and then we'll have two posts coming off of it. One to the treeless treehouse. So we took that measurement and then the other one's gonna go over to our tower. So we also took that measurement to get the lengths of those posts. After we took our measurements for left to right, then we had to take our measurement up to the bracket that's gonna meet the tower. The only problem is we had some carriage bolts up there that were gonna get in the way of that bracket. But the nice thing about metal is if it's in the way, you just take a die grinder and make it not in the way. So after grinding out some little half circles in the back of the bracket, it fit over those carriage bolts perfectly, and I temporarily affixed it to the side of our tower so I could get the measurement from top to bottom to figure out the height of our post. Once we had all of our post measurements, well, all we had to do was grab our six by six pressure treated posts and cut them down to the right length. Lucky for me, I had already purchased this beam saw that I used to cut all the posts for the treehouse thus far. It works pretty good and you get a nice clean cut. Once I had the post cut down to the right length, I just slid on these brackets and this bracket. And then I used the patented hip thrust technique, not only for domino joiners, 
Now this first beam that we cut down is the beam that's gonna go from our concrete footing over to the treeless treehouse. Next, I cut down the post that's gonna go straight up from the concrete footing to meet that beam. As you can see, when I'm cutting through these posts, I like to use a speed square as a guide to ensure I get a nice square clean cut. Works pretty good. Then I had to take that post and stick it into our bracket. The only problem is it needed a little help. So I had to climb up on the bridge and using my wacky whacker, I just tapped it in place while Craig held it securely. Now we thought a lot about how to do this. Should we assemble it in place one piece at a time? But that just really seemed hard to get all of our brackets in where they needed to go and hooked to the structures. So I made the decision to assemble the entire thing on the ground and then lift all three pieces into place. Now for the fun part. Was this a good idea? I don't know, but it's too late now. Oh, also, if you're wondering who that guy is over there in the corner, that's Fantine. He's one of our patrons. He was passing through and decided to stop by and say hi, which we absolutely love it when our patrons stop by. But be aware, we will put you to work and blur out your butt crack if it shows. So, you are forewarned. It was actually really nice having a third person because I'm not sure we could have done this with just me and Craig. Before we tried to lift the entire thing into place, I put up some temporary blocking so that we could just kind of lift the beams up and set them down and not have to bolt them in to secure them. So with our temporary blocking screwed firmly to our towers, it was time to manhandle this thing into the right position. Like I said, it was nice having three people because there was always somebody on any important point at one time. It really actually wasn't that bad. We were able to lift it up there in the matter of about five minutes. Once we had all the posts roughly in place, I decided it was probably a good idea to securely affix our base post to this concrete footing first. So I just hammered in a few of these wedge anchors and I added some washers and nuts and, you know, tightened them down. Now that the bracket was securely hooked to the concrete, it was time to hook the bracket to the actual wood. Now the brackets themselves have these tiny little holes that you're just supposed to use a few screws in, but I didn't think that was very structural. So I just drilled some holes all the way through the wood and the bracket and inserted some big old beefy half inch bolts. I figured two bolts per bracket would make these things pretty darn solid. Not in the manufacturer's instructions, but when do I follow instructions? Oh, also, there is a link to the brackets that I used in the video description should you want to use them for some project of yours in the future. Now, our bolts ended up being a little bit too long, but that's okay. I just got out the old reciprocating saw and I cut them flush to the bolts and tightened them all the way down. Doing this on the ground was one thing, but drilling through two plates of solid steel and a 6x6 post 10 feet in the air, well, it really wasn't that bad, actually. I just climbed up on a ladder and then climbed up on the actual structure, and in no time, all of our bolts were inserted, and everything was pretty much hooked together. I probably didn't have to cut these down because they were up so high, but it didn't look very good, and I wanted it to be pretty. So, that's what I did. Once all of our brackets were bolted to our posts, we could finally hook the brackets to our treehouse and our tower. The last one was being a little stubborn, but I got out one of these rockler squeeze clamps, hooked it on the outside edge of the treehouse and the inside edge of that beam, and with one hand, I was able to push it over. Gotta love those rockler clamps. Now, originally, I was sure we were gonna have to add some other bracing in the form of some angled pieces in every corner to really make this structure strong. But after we got it all bolted up, it was so solid that we just decided not to add those. Unnecessary. Next, we added the mounts for our swings. I found these awesome mounts online. I'll put a link in the video description, but they ensure that the swing swings, you know, really nice and straight and smooth and they don't sound like a dying cat. It was about that time that I felt like I was being watched 
and I turned around to see this strange Ikea box that wasn't there before. On closer examination, I realized it was the foreman trying to go undercover to check on our work. Luckily, we had the last laugh, because he fell on his face. But he's cute, so he gets away with it. While he was trying to wiggle back into his hiding place, I was still busy at work installing the chains for our swings. I think they're gonna work a lot better when there's actually a place to sit. Once I had the swings installed, the next thing to do was to install the bracket for our tire swing and then install the tire swing itself. Again, I found this whole kit online. I'll put a link in the video description. It was super easy to install and Ivor loves it. Then the only thing left to do on the swing set was, well, swing. So as the sun went down on day one, me and Ivor had a nice father-son swing. And I told him that if he ever sneaks up on me again like that, he needs to have a water pistol. You should always be armed when you're going undercover. This video was sponsored by Good Chop. And if you don't know what Good Chop is, let me show you. Meat. If you're like me, you're probably a pretty busy dude and you're running around all over the place trying to build stuff. You don't have time to go to the store. Who's got time to go to the store? But you want good quality meat. That's where Good Shop comes in. You're looking for wild caught salmon? They got that. Steaks? They got that. If you want some bacon, who doesn't want bacon? You can get it on Good Shop. Chicken? The options go on and on. Good Shop offers convenient, contact-free delivery right to your doorstep with fully customizable boxes. Steak? See? The thing I love about Good Shop is that all of their products are sourced right here in the USA because Good Shop works exclusively with American farms and fisheries, which means that every time you buy from Good Shop, you are supporting local farms and ranches, and you know where your meat's coming from, which is a good thing. Now, because Good Shop only sources the good stuff, it means that they are fully confident in their 100% money back guarantee, which means if you don't love Good Shop, you get your money back. Chicken or fish? Chicken or fish? I feel like I'm back at my wedding. Here's what I want you to do. Go to goodshop.com slash YouTube and use the coupon code bourbonmoth120. You'll get $120 off your first four boxes, or you can click the link right down there in the video description. That's goodshop.com slash YouTube. Use the coupon code bourbonmoth120. $120 off your first four boxes. Link in the video description. It literally could not be any easier. And you get some good meat. It was the morning of day two, and on the mission for today, on the docket for tomorrow, on the plate for... Whatever, today we decided to work on the slide. I got this slide, wait for it, on the internet. It came in a bunch of pieces on a pallet, and it did have a little assembly required. It actually took a big chunk of the morning just bolting all the pieces together. So around noon, we hauled them out to the treeless treehouse, and it was time to mount them off of that front deck. The first thing I had to do was create a space for the slide to land. So I removed a section of railing, careful Jason, decided to go right off the side so that we wouldn't hurt the view of the front of the treehouse. You know, it's a nice view. After we removed a section of railing, we had to put in a new post and then cut down a little section to go in between the post and the treehouse itself. This left us with a nice slide sized opening in between the two posts. Next, I had to flush cut some of the overhanging decking so that we had a nice flat surface to bolt the slide onto. Then we raised our first section of slide up, spanned it between those two posts, and bolted it on. Then it was really as simple as just adding on the pieces, piece by piece, following the instructions. I'm really not going to spend that much time on this because it's a slide we bought online and hooked it on the treehouse really not that impressive. But what is impressive is the added feature that I put in the slide. It's pretty cool. This is how it works. You sit down next to the slide like this, give it a tap, and out pops an ice cold beer. Huh? Not bad. A little Corona. Open it up. 
It would be nice if I had some lime. And out pops a lime. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now Ivor saw me do this, and then he walked over to see if he could make it work too. I told him there was an age restriction, and it wouldn't work until he was 21. And then he decided to climb up the slide and try and find the source of the magical beverages. He never did. Then, after finishing the slide, it was time to install the zip line. Now this I bought on the internet. And it came all as a kit, everything you need for a zip line and instructions, which I immediately ripped up. Because who needs instructions to string up a cable? It's not rocket science. So I tossed away the instructions and Craig immediately started piecing them back together because he was not as confident in our skills as I was. But really, a zipline is just a anchored cable between two points. So I started hooking up some cable and some eyelets and I got some turn buckles and we headed out to the woods. Now the zipline is gonna go from our tower to a tree about 110 feet away. So I took this green felt stuff that came in the kit and we wrapped it around the tree about eight feet up off the ground. The purpose of this green felt is to protect the tree from the wire. Next, I took a smaller section of wire and we wrapped that around the tree, making a sort of loop. My thought process behind how I rigged this up is that it's gonna be very secure, but I can also take it down if we don't want it in the future. So my loop hooks into this pretty strong carabiner I've got nice secure holds on my cable so it won't come undone and then on the end of the carabiner I put a big old beefy 2,000 pound turnbuckle. I add a little cable locks up closer to the trees to, you know, hold the cables snug around the tree. And then I threaded on this brake. The brake came in the zipline kit. It's essentially just a long spring and it'll keep kids from smashing into the tree when they come you know, rushing down the zip line. With the brake threaded onto our cable, I wrapped the cable around the far end of our turnbuckle and I locked it in place with some cable locks. Then we stretched the cable all the way through the grass, through the woods, and over to our tower. Now it's gonna hook onto the front of our tower with a big beefy eye bolt. That eye bolt is gonna go through two of these two by tens and the one on the back is the important one because that's being pulled against our six by six posts so it literally cannot come off. So between this eye bolt and the tree, we'll have a pretty strong cable. The cable is quarter inch and from what I can tell, that should be plenty. After sticking the eye bolt through my hole, I added on a couple washers and a nut and I cinched her down. Next, I had to thread our little zip line handlebar apparatus through the cable. You could always bolt this on afterwards, but that'd be harder. And then because I want to be able to remove this, I added this little U-bolt so that we can take that off and not have to cut the cable. Next, we had to figure out a way to tension the cable. So I hooked a ratchet strap onto a ratchet strap onto the cable and onto the tailgate of my truck. My idea was that I just pull forward a little bit. That would pull all the tension out of the cable and then I could hook it onto our eye bolt with a couple cable locks. And it worked great. Pulled the tension right out. And as I was hooking on the cable locks, that's when the ratchet strap decided to snap. Luckily, my face wasn't too close to it and I walked away unscathed. But we knew we needed a plan B. So we decided to do the exact same thing, but this time we decided to use cable instead of a ratchet strap because we didn't want it to break again. This time it worked the way that it was supposed to and we were able to get that cable nice and tight but not too tight on the zip line and locked in place. Then to get a little bit more of the slack out of the cable we went over to our turnbuckle, turned it a few times until it was high enough off the ground and nobody was gonna, you know, hit their bottom and we gave it a little test drive. Ivor hopped on, I ran him all the way up to the top, and wait for it. I feel like with the first run you should really build the suspense. So here we go. He went flying down. I mean, 
sure it could be steeper but that's about as steep as we could get it coming off of the tower considering the height of the tower and well the height of the ground now i did notice that tensioning that cable started to pull our tower just a little bit out of square it probably would have been just fine but i had already been thinking about adding sides to this tower anyways and i figured i might as well do that now because well that's going to make that tower way more rigid and keep it from ever being pulled out of square more than it already is. I actually pulled it back into square with my truck before I hooked up the sides. While I was doing that, Ivor was exploring a new way to play on the slide. Why do kids always want to do this? You get them a slide and all they want to do is climb up the outside. Anyways, while he was busy doing that, I finished up the last side on our tower, and now this thing was rock solid. I mean, three of the four sides are encased in solid 2x10s. And we finished the evening off with a few more trips down the zip line. After we put on our pajamas, of course. Well, Ivor put on his pajamas. I still had a little bit of work left to do. And by that I mean I'm going to wait till he goes to sleep and then come back out and do the zipline by myself, alone, in the dark. The next morning was all about just putting on those finishing touches. We got some cool swingy hanging trapeze type things to hang from the cantilever deck. And then of course with the addition of our new pressure treated side to our tower, I figured we might as well go ahead and make it a rock wall. And then what treehouse would be complete without its very own bucket and pulley system? So I rigged one of those up just with parts I found at Home Depot. Huh? Works pretty good. Now we can send them up lunch. And then last but not least, I figured that when the dads are out here watching the kids, they might want a place to, you know, lounge around and relax. So we strung up a few hammocks. And Craig and I lounged around and talked about whether or not we'd actually finish this decking on the lower half. I don't know. Someday. Maybe. For now, the exterior of the treehouse is, well, mostly complete. Eventually, we'll have to move on to the inside, and I've got some cool ideas for that. The important thing is, Ivor loved everything that we did to it. He was out there climbing on it nonstop for the next couple days. In fact, he's out there right now as I voice this over, which couldn't make me happier. But the most important thing is, now there's a place for all the neighborhood kids to come hang out and play. I feel like something sad has happened to society in the last few years. When I was growing up, we were outside constantly. My parents had to drag me indoors to eat. And now it seems like kids just want to sit on the couch and watch TV and play video games. Don't get me wrong. There's a place for TV and there's a place for video games. I mean, you're watching TV right now. But kids don't stay kids forever. So make sure that every once in a while, they have some time to go outside, play, get dirty, and use their imaginations. <laughs>